So, um, so the last thing that we did, um, you had gone, and I've, you've got to help me remember exactly now, you had gone to the Temple of Moor, um, or near the Temple of Moor, where the, um, order that Matthew Bane, the wizard order that Matthew Bane belongs to. Oh, yeah. And Matthew Bane drew a card. <laughs> and um, failed. Oh, shit, I did. That's right. Oh, no. I drew a card. <laughs> Guys, I missed the last one, so, so I'm 100% so lost. <laughs> I was about to say, we're going to kind of give you a catch-up. So, um, Please. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was her name? At last time I was here, You're an we found the college, guy on right? the... Yes. We so, found the guy on the dock, and I didn't trust him. I trusted him until the very last second. Yeah, we, we, we were really productive. <laughs> I've noticed. This, like, half of this review, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was not here for this. Right. So, yeah, so basically that's the part that you guys are at. So you have gone to the Amethyst Wizards. Um, Shagget, obviously, being a member of it, is kind of you know, got you guys in there without a problem. Um, and you have met with... Let me find her. Where is she? Okay, here we go. Yeah, so you have met with the new, newly promoted Master Wizard, Gabrielle Marsner. Now, she has a deck of cards known as um, the Cards of Master Wilhelm, which is kind of an iffy deck of cards. <laughs> um, now, what she basically said is there's a card in here that can help you. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, but there's one in particular that can help you. So here's what you need to do. Focus your mind on drawing the Two of Swords, and if your will is strong enough... You will draw that card. Well, Matthew Baines' will was not strong enough. And <laughs> twice in a row. In a row. Um, and and um, I was so close, too. Oh. Both times he was really, really close. In fact, his um, his rolls are right here. Um, the first uh, roll, he rolled 57, <laughs> and he needed 50. And then the next one, he rolled 52, and he needed 50. So he failed. Um, so basically, what ended up happening was... We drew a card at random. <laughs> and what we know for sure is it wasn't the Two of Swords. Um, <laughs> so, but not all of them are bad, right? Not so, all of them are bad, correct. Just um, the one that you drew. Just the one. So, <laughs> when he rolled on the table, he rolled a 67. So, um, what card did you draw? Shit. I totally <laughs> forgot we did this. <laughs> this was a week ago, too. Like, right? I know it. Ugh. I'm so excited. I don't know what it is, but I'm so excited. <laughs> Here we are. Okay. So what did you draw? Ooh, okay. Uh, you drew the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles? The Six of Pentacles. So, upon drawing this card, you suddenly feel full of benevolence and charity and no. sharing and gifting. Um, which sounds great. And potentially could be great. Um, the problem now is you, anytime acquire anything of value, you feel compelled to give it to somebody more deserving than yourself. Because you are not deserving of anything. 
Well, that so fits with my already. It, it already does. Fits. <laughs> um, so immediately feel compelled to unload yourself of the burden of anything of value that you happen to have on in your person. Um, the only exception that is drawn to that is specific trappings that are required for your career. So even though a spell book is of value, you don't have to give that away. Well, but nice. any gems, gold, anything purely of monetary value, anything of Damn any it. real worth. Um, and uh, that's kind of permanent. <laughs> So get used to a life of poverty, you virtuous, virtuous elf you, <laughs> because this is now your lot in life. Not only do you believe that the world is doomed and what's the point to anything, well, if there's no point, give it all away. You don't need stuff. So, hey, he can give it to whoever he wants. He just feels benevolent. And, uh, you know. I, I quit. I'm done. It's too much. <laughs> You're the at sort least, of person that At least when I played that dwarf monk for Evil Squeegee, <laughs> he took he took the vow of poverty. I got benefits from it. Like I you know and you still might, because if you feel compelled to give things to other people, yeah. they might reciprocate. They may give you things. They may adhere themselves to you. They may Oh, what a nice elf. Look, he just gave me all this now, stuff. Now, now, wait. Does the clothing count too? Or come uh, on, like your so, clothing is not nice. <laughs> um you would not wear finery, right? But of any regular kind. clothing. Regular clothes. No, it doesn't mean that you're you're now suddenly um, a, a nudist. A, you know, a nudist. Yeah, you're no longer <laughs> just um, you know into running around flashing your bits. That's not. That's not benevolent at all. Right? Okay, so so wait here. Okay, here's the more important question: What about like things for spell casting? Um, it would depend if they have any monetary value or not. I mean, some of them technically kind of do. I mean, if you was to are... give it if to a poor person, needs... would it enrich them in any way? Would it benefit Well, that's them? a good question. I if mean... It's stuff you need for your job. Yeah. I mean, if, for example, if it said you needed a gold coin, would you carry around a thousand gold coins so that you could potentially cast a spell a thousand times? No. You might carry around three or four gold coins... But might feel rather compelled to give a gold coin to somebody begging in the street, even though sure. So okay. that's the kind of that's kind I, of where it's at. I guess it all comes down to. I trust you to, to know where the line is drawn. I guess it all comes down to the butter, right? Because listen, butter can butter. enrich someone's life immeasurably. It absolutely can. <laughs> and I need the butter to bake the spell to drop things. So you know. Can I use margarine, or I can't believe it's not butter? Like <laughs> cheap substitute, maybe. Butter. I butter love how not... there's like a real a real chance that one of us is gonna have to die to complete our mission, and you're worried about if you can continue to carry butter. Well, I mean, come on, we <laughs> all know Chad's thinking it. <laughs> butter is um, completely viable. You can keep your butter. <coughs> butter isn't really anything that's of any okay. value. All right, all right, all right, all right, cool. I'm thinking more of the things like gold bells or pearls or well, see, so I have darts and like a miniature scythe, but those uh, are again, really... they're not really those are weapons and things of yeah. practical use. They're not okay. Of... So I get it. Okay, all right. You know, I mean, all if you right. found a gold plated dart, maybe you... <laughs> this is far too extravagant for me. Here, peasant, have it for free. Um... <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, I mean, really sad, uh, but. As we said, um, she basically told you, look, there is a ritual. I can cast it. Um, if I do this ritual, there's a good chance that um, it will destroy the item. But I've never cast it before. I don't truly know if I've got the power to do it. I'm willing oh, okay. to try. And if she fails, the the demon escapes, and and then you'll have to physically deal with it. So you know, um, 
Nat, any other questions so you're like <laughs> you feel caught up? Cause yeah. Yeah. Ask away if you got them. The, there was this option which was she yep. has the spell but doesn't know if it'll work. There's the wizard who has the spell and the object to ensure it will succeed but he was conveniently well informed of things that would make us trust him more so I don't trust him anymore. Um, and then the third option was one of us dies. Where did that come from? It's to find a willing sacrifice to so take that in was the demon. The jade that was wizard. the jade wizard, uh, okay. Duchamp. He said that he knew how to destroy the artifact, and he was able to do it and willing to do it. But we had to find a willing vessel that okay. somebody we that we would have to kill after he transferred. Uh, yeah, the... um, and the other the other pros and cons were. That, um, yeah, because he was going to cast a, his his ritual was called so the first ritual, the wizard's ritual that you mm. met on the docks, was called, um, the tr um, transfiguration of was it resplendent? No, the transfiguration of resplendent, resplendent glory. glory, which. Matthew Bain says that doesn't sound like a type of ritual that destroys artifacts to him. Um, the one that um, Gulam Deschamps, the Jade Wizard, says he can cast is the Fleshless Made Flesh, um, which basically will, bi will bind the spirit f that is in the dagger to a person, um, and then you sacrifice the person with the spirit in them, and then they are utterly, the spirit is utterly destroyed. But so is the person who had the, you know. Also, while that ritual is happening, the person would become demonically infused and we'd have to deal with him. I mean, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, there's that. And all that depends on the strength of the willpower of the person who is the sacrifice versus the demon. So, what will basically happen is, whoever the sacrifice is, it will be their will against the demons to stay in control during the ritual. If the demon gets the upper hand, he may try to lash out and defend himself. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, but, um, the anointed priestess, I'm uh, sorry, um, the Master Amethyst wizard, Gabrielle Mars Marsner, she says that she knows a ritual called Cleansing of the Corrupt Vessel. Which will destroy the essence of an evil spirit bound into the item. Um, which technically sounds like the absolute best option that you've got on the table. Except for the fact that she is not convinced she can do it. Yeah. <laughs> It will take her like a whole day where she has to And the to ritual focus. takes a long time, yes. Where she's going to be being attacked, basically. Mentally. And that's what she's not sure if she's up to. But hey, maybe she is. For her, it's more a case of, I just don't know. I've never tried to do anything like this before. I'm only newly a master wizard. I'm not really adept at this sort of stuff, but I kind of do sort of know how the spell works. So, uh, we could do it. <laughs> I don't like that. That feels so uncomfortable. So, yeah. So you now have your three different options to kind of figure out how do you want to do it? And then all you got to do is go back to Conrad Mesner tell him how you're going to handle it and see if he's going to divvy up the dagger. Okay, but the most important question. Has Lord Friedrich turned on us? Is he like he is still evil yet? in your pocket. Okay. He's still Perfect. He is still This is the most important question because if he turns, I'm no, going to be heartbroken. <laughs> he's he's still accompanying you on all your adventures and living <laughs> precariously through your actions. Yes. Yes, this is all I need. This is all I need in life, okay? I mean, we could just ask him to be the sacrifice. It's not gonna do that. No way. I wouldn't be okay. Old Debt would never allow that. <laughs> we all love him way too much. 
So, so I assume we're back on the street, like we just recently left. Uh, if, 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 if after that you were done, then yes. You're back out um, near the graveyard, um, at the Temple of Moor, um, just stepped okay. out of the um, Amethyst Wizard's gothic temple, basically. Yeah, I'm going to walk up to Pertilda, rip the gold pouch from my, my, my belt, and... <laughs> Just hand it to her. Be like, here. Um. Eighty, what? 80 Eighty-four gold crowns, fifty-five silver sil silver shillings, and uh, two hundred twenty-four brass pennies. Take it. Why? For for Ulrich. Take it. Uh, you know you take want it, to. But I'm... <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> I'm just like uh, okay. So eighty-four gold crowns, fifty-five silver sil shil shillings. And 224 brass pennies. All my money. Here's something you guys don't get to see very often, or ever. <gasps> How many oh. pennies? Sefi's in here. She never comes in while I'm streaming because she's very antisocial. Go on, babe. <laughs> <laughs> How many uh, pennies? 224. Jesus. <laughs> here is a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna walk up to uh, Catarell and give him my silver brooch of Sigmar. I don't have access to a sheet, but oh yeah, he'll definitely take that. <laughs> yeah, give that to him. I'll, I'll write a little note saying I gave it to him. So. Cool. All right. Um, do you guys want to head back to the burning table into your room to contemplate? Uh, likely. We have yeah. a lot to talk about. What Sounds like a plan. Oh, now I'm getting swatted at. <laughs> <laughs> Jen is online, and what's up, Jamie? Uh, Ninja. Alright, so, yeah, um, let's head back to your in-room, then. Um... You've been to this tavern now many, many times. You've stayed quite a few nights. Um, go ahead... And get you to your room. Uh, or unless you want to hang out in the inn itself. Um, no, I think we go to the room. Okay. I am going to toss my purple cloak to someone as I pass by. A random stranger? Yeah, just like... Peasant? Drape it over them, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, someone will like, Oh, thank you very much! And uh, smile at you and... Probably immediately put it on to... You know, kind of uh, adorn themselves against the cold, damp air. Um, so, yeah, into the room. Is everything all right? Why do you ask? Um, I have you come in contact with any of the artifacts lately that you know of? No. Okay. Okay. It, this has got to happen. What did what did she do? This this was something that the amethyst wizard did. It has to be. Well, you all saw him draw the magical card. Did it like infuse on my flesh or something? Or uh, oh no. yeah yeah. It Didn't just... you say that a mark appeared on his hand or something? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um. An image of the card appeared on your hands. Um, so you actually have like a little pentagram, like a little pentacle with a number six burnt onto you now. You say pentacle, it just makes me chuckle because I've never heard that term. <laughs> like, uh, it's a tarot yeah. card term. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just it's weird to me. Okay. Uh, yep. All that's just convinced that you behaving strangely has to do with the fact that we've all been in contact with the artifact. So I'm sticking with that. It's all right. Just, well, I'm gonna hold up my hand. Where the, where the mark is just a reminder that we're all doomed and gonna die. And what's the <laughs> point of worldly uh, possession, right? I, you know? I don't right. think this is related, but uh, I don't really know how that helps us. Makes us less desirable to be mugged. Makes you less desirable to be mugged. That doesn't really. 
That's true. You are walking around like a with that crazy armor. Yeah. You might want to give that away. <laughs> I mean, you did just give me tons of money. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, because, you know, Ulrich fixed my nose and, you know, you follow Ulrich. So it just seemed fitting. You deserved it more than I did. So. Well, I'm not getting rid of my armor. Fair enough. Your, your choice. I'm not going to wear it, so it's all good. It's perfectly normal. Yep. So, uh... Cool. <laughs> what are we going to do? I think it's... pretty obvious. What way are you thinking, then? Well, we obviously have to go with the Jade Wizard, right? So who are we going? Who's which poor sap are we gonna throw on the fire? I don't know that I would use those words. <laughs> which poor sap? <laughs> and I thought it would have to be one of us. Well, likely, right? You guys are trying to kill me, aren't you? Uh, I will. I will clarify. Fate points will or uh, fate points will not save you in the ritual. Doesn't matter how I many assumed. fate points you have, you are dead. I assumed. I <laughs> assumed dead. that one. Just in case you're all thinking <laughs> quietly, that's no big deal. We have fate points. We'll lose a fate point. That's the worst that can happen. No. This is willing suicide, basically. So yeah. um you will not be saved by fate points. But just bear that in mind if one of you decides to volunteer. To do this, if the ritual happens and goes to its end as planned, you will be rolling up a new tune, <laughs> a new character. Um, well, it can't be Tilda. We would need you to fight once the spirit takes place, the ritual takes place. It, it has to be someone willing. Right. I, I don't think Catarell would volunteer himself, and we're certainly not going to volunteer him to do it while he's not here. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Although it is ever so tempting, I'll teach you to be in Spain. <laughs> How you dare you go on way... vacation? <laughs> no, do you think there's a way that we can combine the rituals? Where we transfer the spirit and then try to allow the amethyst wizard to get rid of it? Uh, I don't think so. What we need is a surefire thing. We do. That's going to work. Right. I can't... I can't ask anyone to do this. No, but it would make the most sense. You're correct. And it can't be you. It has to be me. It can't be you. Why does it have to be you? Because I'm not going to ask someone else to do this. Nobody's asking you to ask. All of us can volunteer for it. I have the most likely chance of not being possessed and giving you the better chance to defeat it. You guys are adorable. <laughs> look, look, look. It's okay. I'll do it. I was expecting more protest after the statement. Oh. I'll take the silence. I was expecting you to go, oh no, why you? But, I don't you know. particularly want any of you to do it. But it makes the most sense for one of us too. And that's someone You are else? the most likely to be able to defeat whichever of us it is. Could, I have we just the least ability in combat as well as the strongest likelihood of staying fully myself while this happens. Couldn't we just restrain the person during the ritual? I mean, I, I assume that it's going to behave in a similar manner to the one we fought back before. I don't think restraining is going to stop it if that comes to pass. 
Yeah, the last one kind of grew and become huge and bulbous and nasty. Right, right. <laughs> I I think the best choice, if we're going to do it, would be me. I don't particularly like the idea of it, but... Are, are you guys just ignoring what I said? Oh, hello, I'll do it. See, the rest of us use weapons. You can do magic. <laughs> <laughs> It, that would be quite terrifying if we were to face off against it. So gag me, whip me. I don't bind me. Who cares? <laughs> gag me, whip me, bind me. Somebody has to. <laughs> has to You're clip a little that. too willing. It's Someone to has to clip that. <laughs> I've been preaching for the past... How many times have we been in this fucking city, Gore? I, I lost track of time. <laughs> um, you've been here over a, just over a week now. I've been insane for a week only. It feels so much longer in my mind. Okay, that's because we've been doing know, this so for many. almost a year. No, this is this so is what long. makes the most sense. How does this make the most sense? I've because been I am the most likely to stay fully myself and not actually attack you. You're saying if your willpower is greater than mine. I'm saying that I have a... Have you not even noticed that we are far less likely to be possessed by things? I don't think we've actually come into contact with yeah, lots where, of Yeah, where's the proof of that? It's on my it's... character sheet. It says my willpower. No, no. <laughs> Halflings are far more likely to be undisturbed by things like this. They're inherently resistant to chaos. Yes. It's like a trait that they have, so they get plus... It's mechanically, sort of like, they get plus 10 against anything chaos on top of whatever their normal willpower is. What, what is your willpower, Odette? I'm just curious. Not oh, I don't even actually know. I'm just... I think that Odette would know that... Would think uh, that... Sure. Would think that she has the best likelihood because of the racial ability. It doesn't even matter the number. Oh, of course. Like, of course. She just course. thinks she has the best ability. No, it's just the player... Likely. The player in me was curious. Yeah, just, if yeah. we're it's metagaming... Uh, if you're metagaming, it's, it's 34. No. <laughs> I didn't even look at it. I was just like, I know I have the racial ability and that's what yeah. I'm basing it off of. Is that... Fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah. I've been preaching that... We're all doomed anyway for the past week, much to your annoyance and your yes, reservations of my annoying. new perspective. Yes, absolutely. Now here comes the opportunity to prove my what I've been saying true. Didn't you say let, that you I'm had to let take me. <laughs> all of us die and you would survive so you could keep preaching? I did. Yes. So but that, that was before I knew that Bertilda here wanted, um, you know, to do that course of action over the others and you know she's the voice of Ulrich right and I follow Ulrich right so and so you should follow her decision but this is a win-win and I just gave my money to her right so now she'll have my money and I'll be her message amplifier with my sacrifice I'll reach far more people See, but I'm concerned because I feel like you've already been touched by chaos and putting more chaos in you. This is fair. I do mm. think that this is dangerous for him. It so makes the be most dangerous sense. for any of us, but... but this this makes the most sense. But two birds, one stone. Two chaos is one me. <laughs> right. This wasn't a problem I thought we were going to have. <laughs> well, you don't have to have it. There's two other options. This... I mean, this is the way... I didn't think everybody would be willing complete. to die, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Tadarella's undecided. This is get back to me in a... <laughs> hour <or two. laughs> I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Look, we know it's going to happen, though. It's going to go into Odette, and she's going to become demonic. Right. And then she's going to kill shot all of us because she's been taking all the kills this <laughs> entire time. 
That's why we take I won't our have, bow away from her. I was about to say, I won't have my weapons on me, so... Oh, you'll get new weapons, like that you'll purple thing be, with the tentacles. Flapping. You'll at least be safe from, from the arrows. Maybe no, we you're... should consult... Temple of Ulrich and Sigmar. Well, you know I can't go to Ulrich. What is there to consult them on? I mean, we have to make the decision. One one of us has to do it. None of us would be able to take you down. We don't want to let Matthew Bain get any more chaos touched. I have the most likely chance of staying myself and letting you guys finish the ritual. Well, maybe we should talk to Conrad and tell him we dealt with Gotrig, which we did, and that we have solutions, and maybe he'll have an idea. Do you want to trust his idea? Also, I don't think he actually cares about us in any way, so... So he's unbiased. Perfect. He would, <laughs> he would be okay with one of us dying, or all of us dying. It makes the most sense. So let's go out and have a good night tonight. I, I'm sorry. I don't see how this makes the most sense. Of course you don't. You don't want to die, but you're willing to die. Yes. I'm okay with dying, and you're not going to let me die. Right. This is doesn't make any sense to me. There are a lot of things that probably don't make sense to you right now. Uh, but I'm very smart. <laughs> if you just talk to me logically, I will make you see my way. See? I don't think that's how that works. It's worked before. You got people to agitate and, you know. Yes, of course. You can't do that when you're dead. I am, well I, am, I am literally a wizard of the lore of death. This is my domain. Perhaps my, my specialty. Death, perhaps my death will agitate enough people. How many times are we going to have to do this ritual, by the way? Do we have to destroy all the artifacts? Because we're going to be running low on party members. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be 50% down. We should just down. do it all at once. <laughs> let's, let's find a new person that wants to join our group off the street Tell them it's a hazing. It's an initiation <laughs> thing. So they're willing. <laughs> and when the ritual works, you'll die. <laughs> Just keep saying that part in air quotes. And maybe they think you're not serious. I, I really didn't think that this would be such a stalemate. That you guys would leap at the opportunity to kill me. Why would you think that? I don't. Even, been... I don't particularly want Odette to die either. Just because I see the, I we're see annoyed with you all the time does not mean we were going well, to attempt to kill you. I don't know how you halflings work. No, you weird. That's. Let this be a lesson. We will not jump at the chance to kill you just because you annoy us from time to time, or most of the time. I think you both make valid points. <laughs> valid arguments. Catarol, be the tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> he votes um, present, right? Yeah. <laughs> here's the thing. I don't think that Catarol would... I, he would be against Soldette doing it. He would oh, also absolutely. Be against, He's in love with Old Dad. Of course he would. He would also be against Matthew Bain doing it, though, because you guys have Not your, as like, much as elf he would romance. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have your elf romance. I, I, Spook is right, though. I mean, I can't speak for him. Um, I'm not convinced that Catarell would not argue against this particular ritual, period. Agreed. Um, but that's only saying that because of how Catarell is. Um, I don't know that he would want anybody to die. And if he felt like, well, I mean, I don't the chances either, are, but... if he feels like you're all dead set on doing it, he probably would volunteer himself at that point. 
But again, yeah. it's all uh, hypothetical because uh, we can't make that decision with him not here. Of course, and I agree wholeheartedly. But absolutely, he would refuse to allow Odette to do it because he's in love with Odette. Yeah, so he one hundred percent would say no to Odette. But I, I agree with Gore. I think he would also say that he was willing. So this is what it comes down to. We're all willing to do it because we don't want any of the others. I got to a D four. Um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah no, his, his logic for himself to do it would be, well, I'm useless. There's no force. We're, I'm a stranger. <laughs> yeah, we're always in a city. For some reason, I keep choosing to adventure in cities. And, <laughs> yeah, I can't seem for the life of me to stop myself doing it. <laughs> I mean, we, we are getting trapped into this one, and all that is kind of tired of being trapped in these adventure well, loops with these artifacts. Again, you have... Well, you're not trapped. You don't have to do them. You can just wait for the demon to, like, touch you with chaos and you can all turn to the dark side. We have been blackmailed <laughs> into every adventure since the very beginning and old bet is fed up. <laughs> this will free you guys. That's why, it. that's why it's called the Grim World. Yeah. This will free you guys from being blackmailed into this, though. Not the happy, 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 joy, joy world of Warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have an advancement, by the way. Oh yeah, you've got mm -hmm. an you've got an advancement to pick from last week. Ooh, Everybody got an advancement. Advancements? Yeah, we yeah. we earned a hundred and thirty XP. Yep. So it was added to your sh did, uh, you got to add a hundred and thirty XP to your sheet unless Oops. somebody did it. Uh. Let me my sheet up. What? what no, was it, it's yet? things are added. You just need to choose an advancement. Yeah. So you've got a uh, hundred point advancement to pick off your. Uh, Stat off your um, guys. I can just column. pick willpower. Oh, what a convenience! <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> no, really, I like I was it. going willpower next. I think. I think I took. Yeah, but I was like, that's only going to up me by five. I think I took wounds last time, and I was going to take willpower the this time. Willpower in the group. Yeah. It actually goes in the group mechanically. It goes Caderell, Highest, Matthew Bain, Old Debt, Bertilda. Purely from a mechanical standpoint. We're talking willpower? Yeah. Yeah. Matthew Bain has a... Um, Catterall has, has... He has 51. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. I have a 50. Uh-huh. I just find it amusing. He's got you pipped by a point. <laughs> the most headstrong, what? and yet... <laughs> she yeah. has the lowest willpower mechanically. <laughs> Yeah, because he rolled a 36, and he has I had see. 15 points of advancement in it. He's at 51. Well, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So... In here, Bertilda's thinking, I'm just going to go have a good night out on the town with Hannah, and then I'm going to die tomorrow. <laughs> And then Old Dad's like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Well, well, why don't why don't we try the, uh, the the death ritual? If it works, great. If it doesn't, we just do the other ritual. You know, like the death I'm ritual. Sure. What do you mean? The 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 amethyst ritual. Yeah, the amethyst ritual. Oh, the cleansing because of the, the corrupt demon... vessel. Because the demon might escape, and we have to face off against it at full power. So this makes, this makes the most sense. Let's go out and have a good night. We can go tomorrow and take care of everything. Was was the amethyst ritual means that it could escape? No, the 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 amethyst ritual meant that she could die if she she will die if she fails to cast it. Like that it, was it. It, it could kill her. That, I thought it meant that the... I thought that was the other ritual. It... The other ritual is you're going to have to fight it while it gains power, I believe. I thought that it, she also said that it was going to destroy the artifact and let the demon out. Let's see. The ritual destroys a chaos spirit bound into the object. It has no effect on the demon outside of the object, nor mutants, beastmen, or cultists of any sort. Similarly, it has no effect on enchanted items, no matter how corrupt the magic are, unless they are chaos spirit bound. Over the course of the ritual, the caster's mind is um, partially open to the spirit of the artifact. The power of the ritual restricts what the demon can do, 
but the dreadful images the caster will see will take a toll on its sanity and possibly its life. The caster must make a willpower test every three hours, starting um, at the beginning of the ritual. Uh, for every failed, po every failure, they gain an insanity point. Um, the first few tests are very easy, and it get it accumulates throughout the night to become very hard. Um, if the caster gains enough points to become insane, their mind does not snap until complete. However, um, if they become if they become insane, the ritual is uh, the ritual will, will fail. Um, let's see. If it is completed, then the bound spirit will be destroyed. Yeah. So basically, she's the only one really that is at risk in that. Okay. Ritual. See, I misunderstood that completely. I thought that we were we would risk if she failed, then the demon would break loose. No. So the other one that you're thinking of, that is the case. Um, you're thinking of the one that Gulam the shamp will cast he yeah says, the flesh is made flesh yeah um it's the sacrifice but it can overtake the body and run rampant if we don't contain it correct. that was what gulam was saying was like yeah we have to keep it occupied while it's being cast well damn this is her job let her yeah, here it is uh, the ritual takes the spirit of a bound demon and binds it into a willing host. If the host is killed during the ritual, the bound spirit is utterly destroyed. The embodied spirit cannot interfere with the caster of the ritual in any way, um, but neither can the caster do anything other than continue the ritual. Uh, if the ritual is interrupted after it takes effect, the bound spirit returns to its binding. Um, the... The sacrifice is um, normally transformed by possession and can become quite formidable in combat. Thus, um, it is not necessarily easy to destroy the spirit. The willing... Yeah, the, the, willi um, the willing victim will make continual willpower tests against the demon. All the time it remains victorious, um, they, will they will maintain and gain control. Should they lose a willpower test... Um, the demon can take care, uh, control of the body and run rampant. So that's what he, that's the one where he said, you'll have to, you may have to like battle the D if the demon breaks free, you'll have to battle it and keep it occupied while I finish the ritual. And how long does that ritual last? Two hours. <laughs> so, so the amethyst wizard, she will have to make eight tests right i mean in a 24 hour period because it's mechanically yes and if she fails she takes a sanity point every time she fails she takes a sanity point but she has to pass eight tests so every time she fails she has to re-roll until she passes so, so i guess uh, she could fail a lot of times in a row and go batshit crazy right um, because so what it all takes effect at the very end of the ritual she could get like two or three insanities possibly all at once. But if she like gets just... an insanity sheet that fails the ritual, right? No. No, no. No, she She can't stop. She has to go to the end. Okay. Yeah, basically, um no. it takes twelve it takes twenty four hours. Um so as long as she can complete the ritual, the ritual will work, but she doesn't know if she's strong enough to get through the ritual. In other words, she may become a blithering idiot and basically, or, I mean, there are some insanities that basically are tantamount to terminal. So it, it, it could, it's, it, I mean, it could totally end her. Um, so well, the what do difference, you think her willpower is? <laughs> so the real well, difference there wizard, is, master wizard, as a group, high, do you, yeah. are you willing to let her take the risk or do you want to adopt the risk? Because for her, it's risk. For you, it's a guaranteed certainty that one of you dies. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's a guarantee. But we can't ask her to do it. Why not? She said she was willing to do it. She said she, she was just, willing to do plus, it. Plus, if she gets interrupted in any way in that 24 hours, the ritual fails. So it's a 24 hours that you've got to keep the thing 
going and her maintain concentration and keep doing the ritual versus Ghulam Deschamps two hours. Um, the flame wizard never really gave you much in the way of the details of his ritual other than he had a magical item that could protect him during the casting of the ritual and he was willing to burn a charge of it to destroy this artifact. Um, without, the art, without the item, it would probably consume him and he would die, but with the item, he can survive it. That's kind of what he told him, he said. Again, guys, this is her job. Let her do it. <laughs> but it's also our job. <laughs> I guess the question then is, could we guarantee 24 hours not interrupted? Not really. You do what you gotta do. <laughs> Look, are we ready to sacrifice someone else the way that we've been thrown at all of these problems? Do you Somebody's want... going to be sacrificed. Guaranteed. Right. If we do it the Jade Wizard's way. Yeah, even if it's not one of you, somebody has to die. Right. I dislike the idea of putting this task on someone else whenever we've had that happen to us from the very beginning. She could have told us no. That she wouldn't do it. She, yeah, basically she said she was reluctant to do it because she didn't know if she was strong enough. But if you felt that that was the only way for her to, that, for, to it to be done, she was willing to try. Didn't we tell her about the other? No. We didn't. Oh, well. Which is probably good. <laughs> <laughs> she probably would have been like, well, no, can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm fine with either of these two options. Because it doesn't matter in the end. It absolutely does matter in the end. I don't see that it does. We're all doomed anyway. Okay. Forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say that it matters is because, okay, if we go with the amethyst route, it's there's a, a chance that it will succeed and everybody will be fine there's a chance it could fail and she will lose her mind and die and we'll still have to do this the other way if we do this the jade wizard's way at least one person is going to die Guaranteed, 100%, one person will die. One person guaranteed versus a gamble of two. Is what you're saying. Yes. Amethyst is either no one dies or two people die. Because we have to do the other ritual as well. Or the Jade way, which is right down the middle, just one. No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, I'm that's saying, what it sounds like to me. I'm saying, if we do it the Amethyst way... And yeah. it succeeds. No one dies. Nobody done. dies. You're done. Yeah. If it fails, then there is the fact that we are going to have to find another way to do it, and she will be dead. If we go it, so there, there's the potential for no one to die. Right, but okay. I that think that, that's what he's Literally, saying is if, but said. if she does die, then you'll still have to do the Jade Wizard way because it's the only other way that you're willing to try. And, 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 it, and minimum two people one. Die. At minimum, minimum one, one will die. I'm way. saying. I'm saying, okay, if, <coughs> if, if we just go ahead and do the Jade Wizard way, minimum one person will die. Right. Potentially more, because the demon could kill a bunch of people while, you know. Right. If we do the Amethyst way, we also have the option for no one to die. We don't have that option if we go with the Jade Wizard. That is true. But if the amethyst, but the point being, if the amethyst, if the amethyst wizard fails and she dies, 
you have a dagger with a demon still in it that you've got to destroy. So then you're back to the jade wizard method. Where you still have the have so now you ultimately end up with now two people dead versus only one dead. minimum. Yeah. Right. Also, right. one person who was a very reluctant offer to do it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm. I mean, what, what I mean. What and, I mean. And she to may say, not die. She might just go batshit crazy, which for a wizard is pretty bad. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you have the potential for several people to die or no people to die <laughs> if we go with amethyst. But if we go with jade. One person. People are going to die. Right. It's a guarantee that people will die. <coughs> well, and also, I mean, I see, see basically, Bertilda is also pointing out the fact that in that ritual, during the two hours, if whoever the willing victim is can't contain it, and other people have to fight it, then other people may die as well as just the one person in the, the ritual. Mm -hmm. So... It's good. This is this is uh. This saying is you have to weigh the the risk versus reward. Or there's the third option, and trust somebody that nobody wants to trust. And no, he's far too convenient. <laughs> the only thing I would want to do with him is like, go find him and steal his glove so we can give it to the amethyst wizard so she has a better chance of surviving. It's the only thing I want to do with that guy. <laughs> I mean, we could ask the Amethyst Wizard if there's anything that we can do to increase her chances of success. Give her a back rub or something. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that would be more distracting. She might fall asleep. Play some tranquil music and light some incense. <laughs> <laughs> no, she definitely would fall asleep then. 24 hours awake, fighting... Mentally fighting. Mentally fighting. Uh, and then somebody puts on tranquil music. Yeah, there's a, there's like, a demon basically throwing your worst fears into your brain, trying to like psych you out. Absolutely. For 24 hours. <laughs> and you wonder why she's not, oh yeah, I'd love to do it. Let's do that. That sounds like a fun time. <laughs> I'm all about I mean, that I'm, mess. Like, I'm sure there are, there's like some kind of spell or blessing we could get done on her to increase her willpower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to have some priests, priestesses or something in the room just like constantly casting every few hours so that when she does her rolls she gets to add <laughs> so yeah um, so to retcon that now that I understand the ritual my money's on amethyst <laughs> I don't I don't like the idea of risking someone outside of our group in that way. If something were to happen to her, we would be at fault for it, for not being completely forthcoming with all of our options, and also doing to her what was already done to us that we hate. Everyone should be willing to, count, to combat chaos and do what they can to combat chaos. Giving people the opportunity to choose yes or no with other options on the table though, is also something that is quite important. We were not given that option, we were not afforded the opportunity to choose to fight chaos, we were sort of thrust on this journey. It doesn't sit well with me to force that into someone else. No one is keeping anyone here. Of us? Correct. We were all forced into this. None of us would have chosen this if we had wanted. That's been able to not do what we want. true. I wouldn't have chosen this. I would have. You would have chosen to come this direction rather than staying with and rebuilding the church. It's what Ulrich wants me to do. But it was Sigmar who sent us here. That doesn't matter. Very well. I would not have chosen this for myself, and it's, it's ill with me that we are trying to force someone else into a decision without all the information. I don't see us as forcing her into anything if she chooses to do it. 
which I believe she should choose to do it, she should choose to help us. Then you should not give her all the options on the table. And let her choose to help us. I don't disagree with that. Because if all the options are on the table and she still chooses to help us, then that's fine, we can go this route. But by not giving her all the options and saying she is our only option, we are doing to her what was done to us by forcing us into this decision to come here. I wasn't saying we shouldn't tell her. So you're basically hey. saying you're willing to do it, but you want her to be told how there are two other options here. Here are the options. We would we think yours is the best chance for nobody dying. Are you still game? Is that what you're kind of? I don't see this. I don't see the third option as an option. So the first two would be the ones that I would be gotcha. willing to give. Because that third option is not really an option because we don't trust the guy. Um. But yeah, no, Old Debt doesn't want to, like, play with being honest in this sense. Because, like, we were told we, we had to do this. We had to come to this city. We had to find this. Because if we don't, we will be destroyed by it. Demons will come out of us. And Old Debt's sick and tired of people saying stuff like that to her. So she doesn't like the idea of doing it to somebody else. You're the only hope. You have to do this really incredibly dangerous thing that you're going to hate. Yeah, she doesn't like that part. And Bertilda doesn't believe that anybody's being forced to do anything. Fair, but Old Dad definitely feels forced into a lot of these decisions that she does not like. So, Shaggett, you speak for the elves. <laughs> I'm just going to listen to both of you guys as you talk. I'm just going to say... This is the world we live in. Everyone is screwing up someone else over at all points. Well, the world is doomed. It's 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 just the it's just the reality of things. So there's no place for you to feel guilty forcing someone into something without full knowledge. It's not okay. necessarily guilt. I'm not pleased with how we were forced into our decisions, and I have no wish to be involved in doing that to someone but else. Were we really forced into our decisions? I was. I mean, we sure, we sure, we definitely complained like we were, but we were told in the beginning that if we did not find the artifact that we had kindly brought to the city, that we would be put in prison for stealing the artifact. That is definitely the truth. <laughs> the first time around. But now we were also told that we were only the only choice for the Church of Ulric to go get the artifact from the temple. Yeah, but that was when we were being manipulated by an evil asshole. Right. We didn't realize this was an evil asshole. Yeah. And I'm then talking we about did on that this mission on this so mission. The having, on this mission. Yeah, the having we were to told, come here. The having to come here and do it is like you're doing it because it's the because they want you to to destroy the artifact, but. On top of that, it's always, it's like, and unfortunately now, because you messed with the last one, you've kind of been um, tainted. So if, you, if, they're, if they're not destroyed, you're going to get it as well. Like, person. Okay, that was basically, that's, not, that's still not forcing us to the do The way anything. that that was presented not by the, the guy in the time, beginning. Not the second time, but initially, you were kind of forced into the it. The guy in the beginning. Life. Well, the guy in the beginning of this leg of the adventure used it as a sort of manipulation that did not sit well with old that well to and me he was just never telling us what that. was going to happen okay okay yeah. i get i guess my only question to you old yes is do you see the amethyst master wizard destroying the third item if we don't include her in anything you know that silent as death so well you weren't here just to remind you that the uh, the the amethyst wizard. She was severe, super quiet, kind of like she was a corpse anyway. In this black room where you could barely see anything. Okay. And <laughs> she was not a pleasant person, but she wasn't evil or mean or anything. She did make it very awkward. The awkward silence. Core. Yeah, we were asking her questions, and she just, she didn't answer. She just <laughs> thanks, Core. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so now that you know that, Matthew Payne is going to say... Do you think my say, opinion's going to change? 
I'm just saying, we have a third artifact to possibly get rid of, correct? Right. Is anyone else in our lives at this point in time going to do that? Or is it up to us? I'm all for letting her try, but I think she should be aware of all the options on the table. But if you tell her all the options, she will not want to do it. Okay. We don't know that. Then she will not We're want to do sure. it. We're pretty sure. We don't know that. It's implied. I, I got that implication. If she knew she could die, she would have said... She could have told us she couldn't do it to begin with. I just think... How do we know she wouldn't want to do the right thing? If we're not going to find someone as a sacrifice outside of this party for the fleshless made flesh jade wizard option, our likelihood of destroying the third artifact is even less likely. So we should all be alive for that to happen. I'm willing to let the Amethyst wizard try. I just feel like she should be able to make the decision with the information on the table that there is another option. I agree with that. I never intended to not tell her that. Oh, see, I... In fact, I thought we already did, which was why I was confused. I personally don't agree with that, but I feel like I'm going to be overruled here, so we could tell her. I have a feeling if we tell her about the second option, the flesh of my flesh ritual, she will back out. And that's what she chooses to do. She'll have to deal with that on her own time, because she's not willing to do what needs to be done to get rid of an artifact. So fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, this is why Bertilda doesn't like Conrad Messner, because she thought it was bullshit that he didn't want to try to get rid of this artifact. Well, he, he says he doesn't use it. Yeah, he says he doesn't know how to get rid of it. Yeah, but he was also saying, uh, yeah, I'm not going to like give it to you unless you can not only have a way to destroy it, which I agree with, but, and you get rid of this guy who's like bothering me. Which we did, but not violently. Yeah. So yeah, but his, I'm like, his, I'm sorry. That's yeah, really he, petty. He for kind something. of hid behind the fact of prove to me that you're capable, so I believe you're possibly capable of destroying it. If you can't mm -hmm. do this little thing, why would I believe you can destroy the chaos artifact? Yeah, but it was really, pretty obvious was that that was a very his... convenient test. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, let's go back to the Amethyst Wizard and inform her of our second option and okay. see if she still wants to do it. I guess if that's what you two want to do, let's do it. I think she's. I think that's the best option, but of course, like us, she needs to know everything. If somebody who's willing to put themselves at risk, they deserve to know everything. I don't agree with that, but sure. <laughs> Of course, you don't agree with you that. You don't always have to agree with everything to agree to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. <laughs> all right. It's the story of this party's life. Are you kidding me? It's what we do all the think, fucking time. I don't think we've agreed on anything since we got together. Like, <laughs> the, only thing we've agreed on, the only thing we've agreed on is that we love Friedrich, okay? It's the only thing all of us agreed on. And that we don't trust the Bright Wizard. So, yeah, that's those, true. those two things. Yeah. But you guys head back to oh, well, the I think Amethyst you all were, were incredibly stupid for going there without. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I mean, you're because you've already seen her, and because there, she's told them that you may be coming back. Um, you can get back into the shady little darkened room that is her little hidey hole, where yes, she is in the corner with her big long cowl, and everything's covered up, so you can't see her. Um, and you come back in. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do? How do you want to spin this? I'm going to tell her everything. Okay. I'm not going to try to spin anything. I'm going to tell her from the very beginning, again, why we're here. Um, What we've found out. I'm going to tell her about all three of the rituals, including the one that <laughs> we think is BS. Yeah. Okay. So tell um, so tell her. Let me let me hear what you're gonna say. I wanna hear it I wanna hear it voiced. I want to I'm hear I'm gonna turn and look at Matthew Bain because he's the one voiced. with the, the Oh no, I'm I am I'm gonna look right back at you. <laughs> I am not taking I don't agree with this, so I'm not being the one to speak. Oh Jesus. Okay. That's gonna take forever. 
It depends on into how much it. She already knows why you're here and what you're trying to do. So she knows all of that. What she doesn't know is that there are two other possible rituals of which you may choose to omit one or you may not. Okay, um, so as we've already told you, uh, the light wizard, Conrad Mesner, said that he would not give us the artifact until we could tell him that we are capable of destroying it. So we went out and investigated. We came across a bright wizard who claims that he is able to destroy it, but we're not sure he can be trusted. He apparently was wearing very uh, conspicuous artifacts himself. He referred to a ritual known as the Transfiguration of something Splendor. What was it? Resplendent Glory. Resplendent Glory. Okay, let me make a dice roll for her. Uh, 66, but that would be very hard, so she's a 36. Okay, let's see if she can roll 36 or lower. Eight. Um, okay. She will tell you. Um, she kind of like becomes suddenly more animated than you've ever seen her. She like leaps out of her corner. And for That's just scary. a second, you kind of <laughs> see the robe like fly back. And for a moment, you catch a glimpse of a terribly disfigured face. It looks like it's like terribly badly burned, which maybe is why she kind of covers all of her body. Yeah, bless her. We were told not to stare. So, um, upon hearing that, yeah, she kind of like leaps up, um, and she says, "Thank the she says, thank the gods that your intuition was correct. Transfiguration of splendid glory." is indeed not a ritual that could destroy the artifact. Far from it. If the ritual is cast, the caster themselves would become a powerful creature of chaos, embodying the artifact and bringing the spirit within themselves, empowering them with terrible, terrible chaos gifts. Whoever this person was, he meant to manipulate you and use the artifact to empower himself in the powers and means of the ruinous powers. Okay, I'm going to store that information in the back of my brain so that I can track this bright wizard down later. <laughs> of course. It's obviously an evil bastard. It is not, a, it is not an evil thing to cast, easy thing to cast. And if you fail, then you would be consumed by the artifact yourself. However, anybody willing to take the risk to gain such favors, such demonic powers, is probably willing to sacrifice their life and indeed their very soul. You did well not trusting him. Bitchin. Okay, um... <laughs> so about the three options that you have... Um... <laughs> <laughs> all right so Whew. so that leaves two of course you already know about the one you told us of uh we also spoke with a jade wizard who informed us of a ritual known as fleshless made flesh fleshless flesh, flesh, fleshless made flesh uh in which he would have we have to have a willing sacrifice um Oh, cool. Oh, she knows oh, that ritual too. <laughs> Sweet. That means she or already knows, knows it. it exists, huh? Um, um, so yeah. he says that he. Yeah, she doesn't do know that. the ritual, but she knows of the ritual. Yeah. Uh, of course, the the risk. We know there will be at least one fi one casualty. Minimum. Yes, unfortunately, it is far from. Uh, desirable method to destroy the artifact, although with no other means would be one that should be pursued 
Uh, but as you say, it does mean that a willing victim has to sacrifice their life and soul in order to allow the artifact to be destroyed. So that being said, given that there is an absolute win with your ritual that is possible, we would prefer that route. <sighs> However, we understand that this is putting yourself at risk. Well, as I said before, I am willing to try. I, While I have never cast the ritual, as you uh, may not be aware, I am not in good physical health. 24 hours is a long time. I don't know if I am up to the challenge. I don't know if my mind is strong enough to deal with the onslaughts of something so vile. But in light of your other options, it seems this is the only one that is viable for us to attempt. What, what if... I'm going to speak up. I'm going to walk up next, besides Bertilda. So I imagine I was just behind you a little bit. What if we could bolster your resolve? How would you plan to do this? Well, I know of no spell or no magic that can be cast to increase one's... This, this master, this bright wizard, by the name of Wolfgang, had some magical artifacts on him. We know what his purpose is, what he wants. We didn't trust it. So he's still in the game, probably against us, especially if we don't agree with him. You're saying we should take advantage of him? We should kill him so he's off the board. He had this amulet of Sekathar, which could be used to protect against chaos. Um, okay, let me give her a roll on that. Oh, please roll well, Gore. <laughs> Dropping all of the info. Uh, she all. does not know about the amulet of Sekathar. Okay, but I, I mean, I do. So, all right. I mean, but think about it, guys. I mean, this ritual is is, is a whole day. Uh, you were the one that succeeded on knowledge about it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the so, gods of Jar Freight and the amulet of Sekathar. Okay. The, yeah. The I wrote. Yeah. So the only difference here is the Amulet of Sekathar um, guarantees the successful casting of any single spell um, or anything like that. If they use the ability, the Amulet is shattered. But his ritual is kind of a one and done. Hers is a 24 hour ordeal. Okay. All right. So you it could don't protect her maybe once. You don't know if it would work at all or not, or if it would just protect her maybe against one mental onslaught. I mean, right, but it is a possibility more than not having it for her. I mean, that's it, it couldn't hurt to have it. No. Well, yeah. here's the thing, though. The question yes. <laughs> is: Do you want to take on a seemingly powerful bright wizard who has? these artifacts up front. Well, also, out of character, <laughs> would, would Matthew Bain tell the rest of us that that's what it did? I, the rest of us he don't did. Know he what did. No, he did. He did tell everybody. Yeah, oh, you, well, you were gone. That was I, part I, of I what... Whispered, yeah. yeah, that was part of what made you all suspect is he had... He was wearing the gloves of Jarafet, which give him, like, increased strength and uh, ability to fight. And he has this guaranteed success spell casting amulet on. And he dropped the names of the gods that we followed, and he was just very conveniently. And if you take and if you take all of that off the table, in order to have those two magical items, he's obviously not some random charlatan off the street. And if he is, a, remember he had the little flames bouncing in his eyes. Which Matthew mm -hmm. Bain knows is a practice that that happens after you've been practicing your craft for a long time, and it's different for every 
college, but because the Bright Wizards are all about flames and burning, that's those little bounces, that's because he's becoming the essence of flame. So you would know without a doubt he is a he is gonna be a powerful opponent if you try to take him on. And it is all offensive magic. Everything is fireballs and worse <laughs> with him. So I'm not saying that it's a bad idea. I'm just making sure that your <laughs> oh, I'm you just players are aware it. <laughs> of potential. You know, Matthew Bain would would definitely know the potential risks of taking this guy on. Um, you're back to and people may die. <laughs> So that's dangerous. But hey, if you want to kill a chaos, a chaos fanboy flame wizard, <laughs> can't we just go like tell his principal or something? <laughs> his dean. <laughs> go tell on him. The only reason why I even mentioned this, not only because it's a possible, only possible, Wolfgang not guaranteed, <laughs> uh, protection maybe once of the times for the ritual the only other concern i have is it's a it's an all-day ritual and he knows that we're in the market for that item so he could disrupt it or I interrupt know it. What item it is yeah he does oh uh, did we tell him yes yeah you i did. don't oh yeah, y'all told him <laughs> never, he, he, kept kept him he was saying we, i don't know whether I don't know whether I... It was the last I... three, and he was like, these three, I would be able to... Yeah, and he dropped destroy. he dropped that as one of yeah. the three. We yes. we didn't say who had it or where it was, yeah. did but we, we did say that we that were looking... it was the one? Uh, you didn't, but I think that's where everybody was like, how convenient that that happens to be one of the three he can destroy. And I think it almost... That was where it kind of started to feel like, hang on a second... No, yeah. this dude's been spying on us since we got here, probably. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, think that was I just, the thing. I, mean, he, I was like, I don't think we told him which one it was. You didn't specifically, yeah, but, but I think you kind smart of enough to he figure already out. knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which and also, means he probably knows that we're here. He might. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's also remember, guys, that we have had an assassin in our room. We have gotten attacked by the Crimson people, right? I mean, the remnants of them, like. There are people in this city who want to kill us, and a 24-hour ritual is a long time. That's why I'm mentioning this. Well, cause... that's why you got to have it at a place he can't get to. Like, say, the Light College? Conduct a ritual in the Light College? Why not? Can that be done? Um... Well, we go ask your buddy Conrad. We'll have to find that out from... Uh... <laughs> Okay, so I, so as Matthew Bain out loud, I mention the Bright Wizard and the Amulet of Psychothar. She doesn't. What's the name of this that wizard's is. name again? Sorry, I, Conrad Mezzi. Gab, no, oh, Gabriel. No. Oh, Gabriel. Okay, Gabriel. Ma um, this Not is Gabriel Marsner. Yeah, Marsner. Okay, so I'm gonna say, Gabriel, where must you do this ritual? Well, it would there need to are be somewhere enclosed. It would need to be somewhere secluded. Um, there are a couple of places that I can think of below ground. A large cellar in a recently abandoned house that I can think of might be a good place. Okay, because there are people in this city who mean to acquire that item and mean to do damage with it, like this Wolfgang guy, the Bright Wizard. Well, then 24 be... hours is a long time, so just concerned and Then about... it would be smart for all of us to go to the location separately and try to limit the possibility that they know where we're going, I would think. could be difficult my other suggestion was that we recruit certain people to help us there is no way that they would allow me to try to do such a thing here in the amethyst college 
having that sort of chaotic power being unleashed is not something that the college would permit. Not on college grounds. I can spread some rumors that it's going to take place at a different location. Or perhaps a few locations. That could work. I wonder if we wouldn't... Make it just confusing so that nobody can directly follow us. Um, I wouldn't wonder if we should... Lord forbid that the, the, uh, something goes wrong. Um, we shouldn't have a backup plan. Certainly. With Duchamp. Meaning, if if this ritual doesn't work, we would do the other ritual right away. All right. Um, we might want help from Theodora, if she's willing. Um, as much as I don't trust him, Conrad. <laughs> All right. They These are going helpful. to be very... I mean, I just imagine. They're going to be easily followed if all of us are convening in one location. But we could potentially get the assistance. We could get some doubles to run towards other locations, spread some rumors that way, and perhaps just confuse whoever's trying to disrupt the ritual enough that. We just need to buy time. Right. And I think that we can buy a bit of time that way. Some body doubles if we could just get some runners to go to these other locations and sit there for the night. Lord Frederick may be able to help us. Certainly. Perhaps uh, we could get the Ulrichians to dispatch an envoy to a fake location. If they would be willing to do so. Well, we got the voice of Ulrich herself right here. You know? <laughs> I could definitely spread enough rumors that would quietly circulate of differing locations. It would keep people confused enough that they couldn't come directly to us, but I can't guarantee that they would stay away the whole night. The biggest issue I see is we definitely need allies and backup to help us uh, not only to keep people away, but if something should go wrong and we have to go to plan B... We want help to, uh, just in case this creature or whatever overcomes our sacrifice in plan B. Um, but everybody knows the hardest way to keep a secret is if more people know. And the more people we tell, the more likely it is for the truth to get to the wrong person. It's true. That's why I was willing to spread all the rumors of false information. But I do think we should limit the number of conspicuous guests we have arriving. Perhaps if we just have a pathway that is easier to retreat from, and that be the place where we meet for the second ritual if it becomes necessary. <laughs> I mean, well, also, we don't necessarily need our backup to be in the place where Gabrielle is doing that ritual. We just need to know the pathway we're going to take. So that we can make have the our decision backup quickly there. and have it ready to go. Yes. Okay, so we need to get. <laughs> she needs to get to gossiping, and we need to get to making contacts and actually getting the artifact. Well, she can tell you the address of where the house is that she's thinking of that would be a good option. Um, so that you'll know where that is. Okay. In case you want to go check that out. Um, and she'll basically tell you it's right across the other side of the river. If you stand at the graveyard, you can actually see it across the other side. Um, and it is this building right here on the map. I'm going to suggest that the party not go there directly. Oh, for sure not. <laughs> I'm going to take us to a few, like, abandoned buildings first. Like, we're being followed. This guy knows what we're doing. 
All right, so who all do we need to make contact with? Um, on red. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the Jade Wizard, right? Let him know. The Jade Wizard. Up. Who else do we, do we want Auric. to see if... Ulrich will send people to one of the houses that I send a runner to. Or yeah, like a body so double. The Temple of Ulrich. Do we want to go talk to the Celestial Wizard again, Dietrich? I mean, oh, you mean Dieter? Dieter Klempfer? Dieter, Dieter. He, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he, it's up to you. I mean, he's. I mean, he should know already, right? That's his. That's his jam. Um... <laughs> should we tell Frederick? <laughs> or just leave Frederick completely out of this. Um... Tell him after the fact. He can feel like he was a part of it. Yeah, we'll just inform him what happened. Just make sure, right? yeah, make sure you tell him what happened so that he can remember to tell everybody. I mean, that you that's could what always tell him the wrong thing. That. That doesn't feel nice. <laughs> yeah, we actually like Frederick. We don't want to. No, like... I mean, like you could tell him that, like, we purposely need distraction. And this is true. He could do that for us. I mean, he is a loud mouth who would want to be involved. Um, we could tell him that we purposely need a distraction, and that anything he can do to like throw people off our trail by telling them the wrong thing like he can know that it's the wrong thing we just don't tell him the right thing until afterwards well who does he love of us the most who do you love <laughs> i mean we could get him to go like to knowingly spread the misinformation where we send the Ulrichians, right because it'll just be more of a show more of an open I was thinking we could send him we could send him with the information of the second location. The first location where the old Rickians go. The second location is where he can be like, oh, they're sending the old Rickians for show, but this is the real location. So it feels like somebody's oh. getting <laughs> information. You want to layer the deception. Absolutely. Well, that's just not my forte. That's your this forte. Is how so. this works. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just have one deception. You have to have like four or five deceptions to keep them busy for most of the time period. I see. It'll delay... They will follow the chain, and it will delay Layers of the actual locations. Alright, do we think Theodora would be of any use to us in this situation? I mean, she's fought lots of chaos. If we have to go to Plan B, she may be helpful. You can have her at the location for Plan B. I mean, why not? She's, uh, yeah, she's the person to help us for sure. I don't think she should be at Plan A. No, I don't think we need anybody except for Gabrielle and us. Yeah, to make sure that minimize the number of people who could come and interrupt us. Okay. okay. Sounds like a plan. All right. So, what are we doing first? I am immediately going to scout locations for a few. I want to say I have like three alternate places you... that could potentially okay. have this. Gotcha. Um, alrighty. Um, All right. While you're scouting that, are you going to try to find a place for Plan B? I can. I figure we'll want Plan B near Plan A, near enough to Plan A that we can get there quickly. We don't want to have to fight somebody to not take the artifact on the way to Plan B. So we um, want to know that route, like you know, pretty well before we right. actually have to take it. All right, so we can divide and conquer right yeah. now. So um, we need somebody to go to Lord Frederick, unless that's something we're going to have Old Debt do as well. If it's part of the deception, uh, I mean, you can send. If there's something you know that's fairly mundane that isn't going to take much, you can always send Caterell. Sure, let's do that. To Frederick, yeah, because they were on good terms, right? They did. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. they had a good so um, what do you so want... Can... So what's he, going to, what's he going to tell Frederick? He's going to tell Frederick that we are... Sin we're going to send the Ulrichian guards to protect the ritual secretly, but we're actually going to be at a different location. And you want him to spread that around? Is that the plan? Yes. So, but like secretly spread that around. Like not tell everybody but make it like, oh, I'm not supposed to be saying this. Right. Just kind of drop it in a few choice circles. Okay. 
Um, um, yeah, uh, he you... is more than willing to do that. Um, he just wants to know where. Should he doesn't do a lot unless you just don't want to say where, and then that would just mean that people would be probably watching the Temple of Ulrich to see where the guards are going. The guards go, so you can do that too if that's what you want. Um, I'm gonna. I'll have Cattle Row with me for a little while until we find at least a couple of the locations so that okay. we know where we can like drop some hints and I'll leave Cattlewell to talk to Frederick about his part in all this. All right. And you know, like stress that like this is not where we're actually going to be but right. it, his I mean, job is so Yeah, important. wandering around looking for empty buildings um yeah. is going to take you a little while. Um Yeah. I figure Cattlewell will help me for part of the day and then we'll yeah. split up from there. It'll work. Okay. All right, we we need somebody to go to Theodora and somebody to go to. I'll go to the Temple of Ulrich. Yep. Um, we need somebody to go to Theodora, somebody to go to the Jade Wizard, and then to Conrad. I don't think that it makes sense to go to Theodora and the Jade Wizard until we know where Plan B is going to be. Gotcha. Okay. Theodora is not that far from the Temple of Ulrich. All right. Because the Temple of Ulrich is here, and Theodora is here. Okay, so how about this, guys? Um, I'll go to the Temple of Ulrich. Uh, Matthew Bain, you want to go to Conrad? Sure. Are and you, you, and uh, you, uh, presumably you guys are going to have to meet up with... So at some point... We're all going to meet up again. Somebody's got to tell the Ulrichians which building to go to. Right. Okay. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. For giggles and grins... Um, we're going to say. I would also like when we're actually going to do it. This is like a future thing because when we tell the old Rickings where to go, I'm going to have uh, try to find people who will for some money be us and go to these locations secretly at night and just sit there for the night. And they get paid a lot of money to just sit there for the night. Yeah. Okay. So, so at some point we need to touch base again with the old debt um, so that we know. Yeah. Where to send the, the Ulrichians and where to tell Theodora and the Jade Wizard to meet us. Yeah, the Jade Wizard. Yeah. Sounds good. But yeah, I do want to like have people who are our stature in cloaks moving through the night to these locations. So where I've drawn the blue circles is kind of three three buildings or three places that you've identified because obviously you wouldn't want one of them to be close to where you're actually going right. to be right right so for sure there's three that you're able to find that are not right close here to where you're going to be you, you okay. guys are going to be at the red circle the decoys are the three blue circles got it well okay. one, one of one of those sites would be plan b right the uh no Jade. those are not plan b we wanted plan b closer to our location Oh, okay. So a green circle somewhere. So okay. So you want to find your, so that's part of your plan too is to find a green. Um... Yeah, plan B. Okay. We could also put out. Ooh, knock the shit out of my mic. We could also put out feelers that if anybody sees the bright wizard, there. Found one there. <laughs> so we can try to keep tabs on him if possible. Okay. Okay. Which, so the green one's plan B. So which one do you want the Temple of Ulrich to go to? What's the plan there? Because basically, this is all finding all these buildings is going to happen during the main part of the day while they're off talking to the other people. Right. And then at the end of the day, you're going to have to go to Ulrich and say, here's where you need to go. I think. So, which one do you guys one. think? That one? Like, part, like, that puts them really close to plan B if we needed the backup for plan B. And, right. also, and put, also, we're saying that, like, oh, like, we're spreading rumors, like, oh, we're pretending this is where we're going, but we're not really going there. So they're less likely to check this one first anyway. Okay. Because we're spreading the rumor that we're not going to be there, that this is for show. Gotcha. So this is kind of like the big false one that's a big picture, Yeah. but really we're not going to do it. Um, so there'll be a heavier presence in this area. Also, this is where the, the Jade Wizard lives, right? In this section, just you, south well, of it. Well, it's not far from Gulam Jashamp's place. That's why I figured. Yeah, so you're right, Nat. It's like the perfect... I think, yeah, yeah I think we're going to send the guards to this one. 
I want to send the or people who do look you like want, us to these. Or would you want to make... I mean, it's up to you. You could also make this one the backup and use that one as a decoy. I mean, that one gets a little close to you, but this is ridiculously close to Ghulam de Champ, so... Okay. If that you had to go to Ghulam, you wouldn't have far to get from there to the backup site. Sounds um, good. But, as I said, this does put people very close to where you actually are. If they're scoping this one out, they're not far from where you really are. So it's up to I you. Would, yeah, I'd bring that back to the group and let the group help the group decide. So what do well, you guys think? So the... With the feeler out that we're going to do a ritual from the, the Amethyst College, it would make sense that this would be not a you know the backup plan, but the main decoy that we want because it's right next door to the Amethyst College. Right? Well, mm -hmm. so so you guys are going to make hypothetically this one the most publicly obvious decoy, so that this is the one that seems that most people will pick up on first. Yeah. Anybody really digging. And knows that you're working with the Amethyst College, you're hoping will think it's here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this will be like a third option. Like maybe they just went really far away because they don't want us to find them. Yeah. That will be the our light, third I player. mean, that's by the Light College anyway, right? So, um, somewhere in theory. I mean, theory. <laughs> theoretically, it's nearby. So, yeah. Th those that's where the... Conrad would go. So, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. I think that the most obvious one, we want it to be so obvious that it's not really on the table for people to want to scope right. like it is the most obvious anybody who well and then not only to... that i mean if there's a huge contingency of friggin ulrichian knights or priests who's mm -hmm. likely to actually try but yeah. at the same time um if anybody's that determined <laughs> if they're that determined they're not going to think i mean one there good... because I... A rogue bright wizard who doesn't care about his order, all he's going to do is drop a couple of conflagrations of, of doom and they're done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he's got the magic points for it, my it's a nuke though, from orbit. It'll take out half the block. <laughs> my thought is, if you're determined enough to want to take on the Ulrichians, you're determined enough to actually find the different layers of yeah. the deceit that I'm laying. <laughs> And I'm hoping that they'll just end up at a different place and just confused gotcha. as to where we're at. And, like, be running all over town for... I don't think I can keep them away for 24 hours, but I think I can keep them away for a long period of that time, gotcha. if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I'll make the one closest to us. I'll let the everybody else decide if they want the green one or the blue one for our backup. But the one closest to us is going to be the most obvious one. Um, and I'm fine the, with this as it is, personally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so um, we know what Aldette and um, Cadarell are doing. So then that leaves Bertilda to go to Ulrich um, and Theodore and Matthew Bain to go to um, Conrad. Comrade, who you'll have to meet tonight at the at the club because you don't know where his temple is. <laughs> um okay so in that case so s let's see so bertilda you're going to the temple of ulric mm -hmm. okay so once you get there um again you're very favorable there hell you just spent an entire day volunteering to do menial labor for him so um plus you i've got the tattoo and all that good stuff so what do you what do you want to ask them to do what's the game plan um i'm gonna try to go to the one that's on top <laughs> uh, as close as I can get okay. to let them know that some chaos shit's about to go down um, and I'm I'm going to tell them everything I'm going to tell them uh, going right to location well no I'm, but I'm going to I'm going to reiterate it's that really going to be here because <laughs> telling you is perfectly safe because Ulrich, pre uh, Ulrich High Priests are never in league with chaos. That no, absolutely... I, I, 100%. Like, I already hate that we're having to involve so many people as it is. But anyway, oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them, like, we have, the ri have a ritual to destroy the chaos artifact. So we're going to retrieve it. Um, but there is a bright wizard that we know is probably wanting to get his hands on it. There could be others. 
Uh, so we need distractions because the ritual is going to take 24 hours. Okay. Um, um, so I'm going to tell them all that. I'm going to tell them that we need them to help us with our distraction to keep people away so we can perform the ritual and to potentially that they may potentially have to deal with a bright wizard. I don't know. Uh, it really just, like, I don't want them to just think they're just going to be sitting around playing cards or something. Like, they could be attacked. I don't know. Gotcha. Um, but okay. that this is all to get rid of a chaos mm. artifact and to protect people from getting it falling into the wrong hands. So All right. Um, so you're going to give me a charm roll. Oh, geez. But don't forget your mark gives you a plus 25 out the gate. Guys, this really, that really isn't going to Well, help. and um, you're going to get a plus 20 on top of that because this is something that they wouldn't be opposed to doing. Um, so whatever you've got, plus 45. Uh, that's a fail. Uh, you have points. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 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 try it again. Right. All your old debt. Rutilda. Channel your inner old debt. Yeah. Okay, there you there go. It well is. Um with plenty of success. Okay, yeah, they're they're totally on board. He says Um You know, we believe that you have um the best interests, you know, the realm's best interests at heart. Um they're absolutely on board. Um, he'll make sure that he picks some good, kind of flamboyant people. Um, give them a a good coaching in how to act like they're trying to be stealthy, but don't be too stealthy. And <laughs> you know, the the whole shebang. But yeah, they're um, he's totally on board. Um, so that's part one solved. Um, okay, so part two will be you going to Theodora Ferrick. Um, because, again, Matthew Bain can't do his stuff until very late. Um, so, at Miss Theodora's place, let's see. So I guess Matthew Bain could be with me, with Theodora. If he wants to be. Sure, I mean. If you think I'll be a boon to your persuasion. Well, I mean, we have to we have to see her and we have to like let the Jade Wizard know what's up too. True. Sure. Alright. Uh, she's the one that actually told you originally that there was a rumor about a group of ad other adventurers and one of them knows how to destroy the artifacts. <laughs> um, just to remind you. She can't be trusted now. <laughs> um, okay, so y'all go see her. Uh, yeah, so as I said, she's she is herself a retired witch hunter. Um, she's in her late 40s. Um, and, um, has had her fair share, her fair run in with chaos. And, uh, she kind of retired with a, a very large pile of treasure, which is why she lives in such a nice house and all that sort of stuff as a retired witch hunter. Um, which is decorated with trophies from her many, many adventuring days and stuff like that. Um, what do you want to say to her? Over to you two. Um, I think that we would... We wouldn't tell her as much as we told everybody else. Um, I would just let her know that... I'm going to go ahead and tell her that we did make contact with the Bright Wizard. And that he's corrupted. Um, that we scoped him out and found him wanting. Um, <laughs> okay. Yes, he, he, is, he is not... Uh... Yeah. She'll basically kind of look at you and says, If I was still in my younger days, I would root him out and rip him from this earth and purge him by fire. 
Perhaps you should go and let Gotri Hammerfist know of his existence. <laughs> Maybe Gotri will find him for you and deal with him. Oh, Go Gotri is um is 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 taking a mental break. What? Oh, do you mean a mental break? Uh, the the Temple of Sigmar uh, recalled him. Oh, he uh, had, why uh, is that? He had it in his mind that a master wizard was also corrupted, even though that master wizard was not. Uh, are you talking or, about? We don't, we don't know that he was or wasn't, but he he's had not Bertilda. <laughs> <sighs> Well, I do remember when we spoke last time, you mentioned, you asked the question if Lord Mesnaf was possibly a chaos cultist. And as I said to you, uh, even if I saw him, you know, eating a baby in the streets, I still wouldn't believe it was my own eyes. I never doubt Conrad Mesnaf for a second. Well, well, Gotree had it in mind that Conrad was and wanted us to ambush him and kill him. So, Sigmarians... Sigmarites, um... See? Took him away, too. This is the problem with the Cheer life. Him. If you do not get killed fighting chaos, sometimes a mind goes instead. Uh, well. So, uh, we have procured a different ritual uh, from a jade wizard. Oh, wunderbar. Uh, but we also think that the bright wizard may know more than we want him to. And we're afraid he may try to intercept the artifact. I and interfere see. with the ritual. It is a shame that you have you don't have the access to go tree hammerfist then. <laughs> I actually don't disagree with that, even though he was a he was a little trigger happy. Um Another issue other than that is the fact that the Jade ritual, if something goes wrong, or even if something goes right, <laughs> uh, we may have to fight a uh, someone possessed by the Chaos Artifact Demon. But if you destroy this person, do you destroy the demon? Yes. I don't see a problem. Well, we um, might need help keeping it contained while the ritual is done. Wait, are, are you asking if I will accompany you to battle this beast? If not yeah. you, then maybe you could suggest some some allies that could. Uh, well, I already suggested one, but you had him locked away, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Alright, somebody give me a charm roll. Oh, shit. Um, is your charm better than mine? <laughs> uh, I'm sure his charm is better than yours in this instance. It wouldn't have been with Sigmar, I mean with Ulrich, but it probably is dealing with this retired witch hunter. Nope. <laughs> My charm is, I think, just as bad as yours. Ours is 13. Oh, then mine is much better. <laughs> yeah, as Bertilda's you'll... not charming. <laughs> yeah, mine's much better. Um, oh, I'm you've got, obvious. Yeah, you got a 16. Um, I'm 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 rerolling. I'm doing the fortune point. Duh. Nope. Okay. Sorry. Um, How'd you just transpose the numbers like that? Just... <laughs> okay. She says, "If I was still practiced and less retired, I would have probably jumped at the chance, but." I left that life behind many years ago. I have no desire to get back into it. I understand. Do you think that maybe if we go to the Temple of Sigmar, there is someone that they could suggest? Well, the Temple of Sigmar are the ones that govern and operate and control the witch hunters, perhaps. And if it is indeed for the eradication of chaos, I cannot see why they would not wish to assist. All right. Backup plan. <laughs> now we gotta well, go well, well, wait, Theodora. What? Maybe you don't have to actively participate, but just walk around the scene, you know? Just make your presence known around where we tell you. So, you know, you can <clears> either, <throat> we could have like an eye on the ground kind of thing, you know? 
Yes, but then if the proverbial shizer hits the fan, I will you be can, compelled to get involved. You could be compelled to get back up to arrive. You could be that. That's not something I could do. Reluctantly or not, I would find myself leaping into the fray and regretting it. Wait, <clears> so are you suggesting that she go to one of our decoy <laughs> places, or...? Are you saying that out loud in front of her? No, I'm asking <laughs> you out of character. <laughs> well, we wanted to send her to the green spot, right? Yes, uh, initially I so, wanted her to go there, but... My idea was she wander around the green spot like a patrol, because that would be kind of... Uh, another part of the decoy but okay i mean it obviously didn't work well i mean she's not she's not eager to do that thinking that that is where the ritual is sure. going to be which it would be if the first part yes i get it. okay but i'm not good at the subterfuge crap guys <laughs> i just but, my but she is but as she said yeah. you could always go and you know ask. i don't think that's a bad idea we could go uh talk to Clara Roban, who was the anointed yes, priestess. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I was like, where are my notes? Um, we could go talk to Clara and like let her know what's up. I don't know, maybe she has a shock collar she could put on Gotrek or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you want to do that next and go go to Sigmar then? Yep. Okay. We are telling a lot of people our plan. <laughs> I'm telling them everything. Let's just like, hope that none of them are <coughs> iffy. <laughs> okay. Um, Clara, 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 where are you? Where are you, Miss Clara, on my list of many people? Oh, it begins with a K, not a C. That's why I'm. <laughs> She's down there at the bottom. Okay. So you want to go see her. Yeah, she's the one that was um, seemed to be pretty stern and to the point, but um, ultimately, once you told her all the things that um, Gotri Hammerfist was up to, she did believe you and go along and see. She wanted to verify it for herself, but once she verified it, she did act and, and deal with the situation. So what do you want to ask Frau Clara to do? You want to take this with Shaggy? No, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. Well, I'm, I don't know. I don't know the plan either, honestly. <laughs> Spook. Oh, jeez. Okay, so for Clara, we just want to ask her. <laughs> oh, jeez. What? Someone swallowed wrong. <laughs> Does I almost <laughs> drown myself with this thing? Um. So we just want to tell her basically the same thing that we told Theodora. <clears throat> She's actually the one that tipped you off to know that an amethyst wizard had apparently discovered a ritual. She just didn't know who. Right. Yep. I feel like we might could trust her a bit more. Sure. So I'll probably tell her a little bit more about how this is our backup plan. The Jade Wizard's ritual is. Okay. Um, just because it we most likely we'll end up having to fight a chaos demon if we go with that ritual so if there's any witch hunters or people that would be useful in a fight like that that's what we're asking her for okay um then you can make another um charm roll um good news is because again it's kind of what they do plus 20. But they're not Ulrich, so you don't get the plus 25. So that gives you a 33, I believe. Oh, spoon! Nice roll. Um, she is... Um, yeah, she basically says... Seems like a viable plan. I, I'm glad that you found the Amasis wizard. When would you like me to dispatch somebody? What is the time we are looking to do this? Oh, shite, guys. Did we decide that? <laughs> nope. Um, and I'm assuming you're going to tell Ulrich when. Once you figure it all out. But maybe you don't know yet. <laughs> Hold that thought. 
I mean, you can come um, back and let them know later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell her. I mean, the main thing is to get everybody on board, which is you kind of. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm going to tell her that we're we're scoping out locations because we're planning decoy locations and stuff because of this damn bright wizard. Okay. Um, and that we are going to send word as soon as. I mean, it would most likely be in the next couple of days. Maximum. Oh, absolutely. We would not be holding this off. Yeah. The, okay. The sooner we can do it, the better. Yeah. Yep. Um. Then she agrees to be on board with the plan. Sweet ass, sweet. So Where you'll are we have. Going <laughs> well, you can come with me to Conrad if you want. So you'll have Ulrich here. You'll have Sigmar here. <laughs> Oh, we should probably stop by and let the Jade Wizard know it. When I figure we don't need to let him know right now, but we need to let him know as soon as we figure out where everything is. He says, "Oh, I'm busy that day. Can't do it." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I already have an appointment. I got a date. I already got other. I'm already sacrificing somebody else to destroy a different chaos artifact on Tuesday. <laughs> it's a bright Pencil wizard. So you in for Wolfgang. Thursday, though. You know him. <laughs> Pencil you in between bridge and. <laughs> okay. Um. So, later that evening, you want to go to the Grove. Okay. Correct. Um, and you're where... talking this time because fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want her talking to this guy. <laughs> okay. Um, Conrad Mesner. Wizard Lord of the Light College. Um, is that a town? I don't know why, but it's on vacation. Like <laughs> about for two weeks. Um <laughs> He looks like Thelonious in my head for some reason. Thelonious <laughs> conch. Conch, conch, conch. Thelonious conch. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, he's there most evenings. Um, so you will see him there in his pristine white lordly wizard robes with his serpent of light collar. Um, God, such a tool. <laughs> it's all that regalia, you see. Um, okay. So, what are you going to tell this guy? I'm going to approach him and be like, uh, Hello, Conrad Messner. We are back. Some of us, at least. Mm. What happened to the rest of your number? Did they meet their demise? Uh, <laughs> they got killed on the, by Gotrig. No. On, on the, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> on the contrary, they are currently enacting a bold uh, new plan. You know, that getting every people on board. Um... We have uh, not only passively dealt with uh, Gotri. He, uh, what do you mean you... passively? Well, we had him committed, basically, um, for his insanity of wanting to murder and kill you. You believe that it is caused by an insanity? Well, the high priestess seemed to think so. Yes, uh, the high priest of Sigmar, Clara. And how do we know that once he is cured he won't come back and just try to reenact his vendetta against me because by then the artifact will be out of your possession and destroyed he was never after me because of the artifact well that was actually part of his reasoning was that you had it so thus you were guilty because you possessed it or you had it in your college is that so that was the reason why he wanted to ambush they you. They promised us lots and lots of shock therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I see. But yes, uh, he, he he was after you because he believed that since you had possession of the artifact, you were clearly corrupted by it. Even yeah. though it's your entire college's purpose to study such artifacts. I assume that it was just the very fact that, I, that our college sat on many artifacts. I did not know it was this particular one that... Well, uh, anyway... Um, I suppose as long as if it was destroyed, it was made clear to him that it was done, then perhaps it would be out of my hair. Yes, and we would, of course, stick around to ensure that he wouldn't still come after you. I know just how convenient this plan is of yours, though. Well, you haven't even heard our plan. I mean, convenient? no, it's the fact that. It would require me giving you the artifact to destroy it in order for him to permanently be removed from my problem. Because if it's I didn't give you the artifact <laughs> and you didn't destroy it, then he could come back after me. Well, see, that's why we have two plans. 
unfolding. No, no. Hence why I'm half sorry, of our I, party I, is I, missing. I commend you for your ingenuity. It is the sort of thing I would have done. See, I keep telling Bertilda that, and she never believes me. No, no, I don't think we're having the same conversation right now, Matthew (laughs) Bain. It is the sort of things that I would have done. I would have ensured that in enacting whatever it is that you wanted me to do for you, that it also helped assure. I will be honest. I was very reluctant to even consider giving you the artifact after I thought about it. So to the second question, do you have a method to destroy it? We have two methods to destroy it. Two. Correct. And these are? Well, one is from the Amethyst College. From a wizard, Master Wizard. And the other is from the Jade College. The backup plan. Nice. Um, before we continue, um, I'd like to invite you to stay and have a drink. Perhaps something to eat. Kill a little sure. bit of time. Speaking what would you language. like? I will go to the bar and fetch it for you. Uh, do you have, like, bread? You know? I was talking about the drink. Water? Water. Well, nothing of value, you know? I, mean, <laughs> I see. Uh, I can get some plain water. And sure, for you, do. my dear, what would you like? It'll go on my tab, so don't 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 feel you need to um be polite. I'll have whatever you're having. Fine. So two of those then. <laughs> I'll be right back. Right, he leaves the booth and heads over to the bar. You see him talking to the barkeep and um, Matthew Ben, you know he's going to try to kill us, right? <laughs> no. What? That's ridiculous. Why? I'm sorry. I'm confused about the previous conversation that apparently... After several minutes, he'll come back. But you've got time to have your private little he's going to kill us discussion. (laughs) What do you mean, Bertilda? You don't think that was weird what he just said? Well, he called me a a, a genius. An ingenious. Well, that was weird too, but that wasn't what I was talking (laughs) about. But but I am a genius. So clearly, he's even an though idiot. this clearly wasn't my idea, and it was all the old debts doing, and I'm not taking credit for it, and I'm aware of that, I'm not worthy of that. So he just says it's this. You don't think it was weird that he said it's the same thing that I would have done? No, what did he a, mean by that? He's a wizard like me. He's smart. <clears throat> That'd be smart. But I took it at us at all. Just be on your toes, okay? Stop. Okay, I'm not going to say what I was about to say. <laughs> Stop That's fanboying. a little risque. <laughs> no, I was going to say it much dirtier than that. <laughs> I, I now have to hear what you're going to say. You don't have to stroke his ego quite so heavily. Stay on your toes a little bit. <laughs> it's the polite way of saying it. Okay. Uh, yeah, he'll come back with um, two glasses of fine port and uh, a glass of water. <laughs> the water. He kind of like just it. raises an eyebrow at you as you. Just, you're not vegetarians, are you? No. Good. No. I have ordered us three steaks. Ooh, that's really. I deserve a steak. You know what I mean? Oh, well, maybe you can just eat your bread and we'll share your steaks and I don't care. Um, but there okay. you go. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm gonna uh, sip the water. Okay. <clears throat> Takes about fifteen minutes for the steaks to come out. It's, ah, wonderful. Yeah, say, uh, the grove is well known for its fare. It has a delicious butter thyme sauce that they put on the steak that gives it the most delectable flavor. Please tuck in. The roasted potatoes are particularly delicious as well. He slowly starts to cut his steak and eat little bites, savoring I, I, every mouthful. <laughs> I'm gonna, without eating anything, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean forward and be like, "I'm sorry. Are we not speaking the same language on the on the same page here? Because we did everything you just asked us to do." No. Oh, yes. No. No. 
I merely wanted... I don't want to make such a hasty decision on an empty stomach. While we're eating, I will just process all this information. You must understand, handing over such a dangerous item to somebody purely on the word of what they're telling me. It's a little uh, brash on my part. I have to process this. I'm sorry, do you need to speak with someone about it? Someone who can vouch for us? No, no, I've already sent for them, don't worry. They'll you be here sent soon. for them? Oh, yes, they'll be here soon. Continue to eat. Can, can I ask who them are? Oh, yes, I have uh, have a contact that I use from time to time when I need to ensure that people are telling the truth. Another wizard friend of mine that has a gift of probing uh, the minds. What, what is his name? Or her name? It is a he. And? He is a master celestial wizard by the name of Dieter Klempfer. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we thought you were going to talk about it, so I mentioned another kind of wizard, and we would have been really worried. He says the name, we both go, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the second he says Dieter, I'm just going to lean back and be like, oh, good. Yeah, see? Okay. What did I tell you, Bert 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 Bertie? Well, about another 30 minutes or so later. Now um, I don't have to pretend to knock my drink over in my plate and excuse <laughs> The elder Dieter Klempfer wanders in. He says, how mess no? He's like, yeah, Dieter? He says, I believe you have uh, met these individuals before, no? He says, yes, I have. Uh, is this why you have contacted me? You wish for me to use my particular talents to know whether they are telling you the truth. He says, quite. He says, now then, let us speak plainly. Tell me again of this ritual. Who is going to do it? How it is going to be done? And what the name of this ritual is? Uh, does he cast a spell, or is no, he just he's asking? Just, just saying it with poignant finger pointing. Right okay. here? Out loud? This is a cause... closed pause. Nobody else. Just keep your voice down. Trust okay. me, you can... Uh, Dieter Klempfer is... A strong follower of the realm. He is oh, not we're, a... we're not worried about that. We're worried about the fact that we're pretty sure we've been being followed and spied upon the whole time. We've been in town. Really? Uh, a bright wizard by the name of Wolfgang has been after the artifacts and suggested a ritual to destroy it that we have recently found out was would do the opposite would empower him so we are uh, thanks worried heaven that... for small masses that you did not trust this man then correct um anyway the person who will conduct the initial ritual is uh, gabriel marsner of the amethyst wizards college uh the, the the ritual itself is called the cleansing of the corrupt vessel we have a backup ritual. If that doesn't work. Okay. Um, Dieter Klemford just says, he is telling the truth. But then I could have told you that before I walked in here. <laughs> he says, that is all I needed to know. But uh, he And he, he reaches over, he says, here, have some steak. And he takes Matthew Bain's steak from out in front of him. And slides it over to D to Klempfer. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't resist this. I let it happen. Um, and he'll sit down and hmm, thank you very much. And eat some steak along with you guys. Um <coughs> He says so. I swear to god, if the celestial wizard drops dead in front of me. What is your plan to ensure <laughs> that this What did you say his name was Conrad? Oh, he says, to... I did not say, he said, the, you, you named the individual wizard that was hunting you down. That yes, he was named... looking for the artifact. What was his name? Named Wolfgang. Okay, they both look at each other, kind of like questioningly. He says, I do not know this wizard. Says, no, I do not either. It's not one that... I would like to think that we know the names of most of the wizards of any... Real accomplishment here in Altdorf. 
Well, there's nothing that says he gave us his real name. This is true. There's nothing or that, that he's from Altdorf. That he is from Altdorf. After all, words that you destroyed the artifact in Middenheim reached many of us here. Uh, it stands to reason that this information could have reached him as well. And if he was aware that the dagger was here in Altdorf and that you were heading here, it would be a reasonable assumption to think that maybe you were coming here to destroy it. Um, hmm. Do you have a plan, though, to thwart this individual? Well, uh, that was uh, done by <coughs> our, our little one, Odette, the genius uh, strategist. Um, we have uh, employed a space where we'll conduct the ritual and multiple decoys that we will load up with Ulrichian soldiers and others to make them finding us more difficult. Uh, decoy locations. Three of them. Besides where we're going to do this ritual, and then we have a secondary site for the backup ritual if the first ritual fails, that we can immediately head to. Okay, he kind of listens to you poignantly. And then he looks at Dieter. He says... Well, Dieter, let me ask you a question. You know these individuals better than I. Do you believe they are capable of dealing with this problem? If, if I bring them the dagger, he kind of looks at you and eyes you up and down and says, Well, in truth, I do not know them very well either. But they were sent here by a good friend of mine. Someone that I do know and trust. And I can only assume that he would not have sent them here idly. So if I had to at least rest my opinion on his good name... I would tend to think that it is probable that they do have the ability to do this. Uh, after all, if they manage to find a way to destroy it, and have enlisted the aid of several allies, then why should we doubt them? With that, he kind of looks and says, Very well. On the reputation of Dieter Klemfer, I will bring you the dagger. Where shall I bring it to? Obviously. I have another question. Yes, by all means. I don't pretend to know anything about wizards, especially light wizards. How do you feel about fighting chaos directly? <laughs> we are all proponents of the battles against such entities. But some of us have to do things in a less direct manner. I asked because our backup plan has the potential of going south easily. I see. And we want to make sure that it doesn't get out. Are you perhaps asking if I would assist you in this manner? Is that what you're... If it comes to that, we have seeked out aid from the Temple of Sigmar to have them there in case the willing participant sacrifice gets out of hand and we are unable to handle it. Well, the Temple of Sigmar would be far better equipped to battling chaos than I would, that's for sure. Now, that being said, if the demon were to manifest itself, there is something that I could do. Who wants to make this charm roll? 
<laughs> God, why are the two like worst charming people <laughs> the ones that are in here they doing this? I also love that I said we would never send you guys out to do like negotiating for <laughs> us, and yet I sent you guys out to do all the negotiating for us. You have three more than me, Shagget. What do you think? Can I get like a bonus because I'm a wizard as well. <laughs> yeah, but you're not this wizard. <laughs> as a fellow Plus, wizard, I understand. Unlike the others that are very apt to rushing off and doing that, um, <laughs> Conrad Mesner is less apt to doing that. So I'm Channel not giving you any bonuses bed. for that. All right. So so this is my logic. Bertilda rolled really well multiple times, and I have only failed. So I'm due with success, right? Okay. Channel your inner old debt. And I have a fortune point, so I'm going to charm. You've got two, you got two rolls at it. So here, no, okay. But see, that's why I spend my fortune point, and we succeed. Nope, nope, nope. Nice, but no. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't want his help anyway. So, so, <laughs> so I'm going to be like. Maybe you can help us. That would be great. And then my voice gets squeaky and awkward, but probably not. Let's see. I fear that I would not work well with the Sigmarites in this situation. I think you have already afforded yourself the best assistance. Well, mind you, this is the second ritual if the first one is to fail. I understand. The second one is the Fleshless Made Flesh ritual, which requires a sacrifice of a willing participant. Um, the which first one does not. One of us, so. <laughs> yes. Well, as the first ritual, unless the demon is to actually manifest, there is little I can do to help you. You see, <coughs> while here at the Light College, we do have the ability to cast spells such as Banishment and. Um, Few of us have the power to cast a very, very powerful spell called Demon Spain. But there is only me and maybe three other members here in Old Dorf that could even attempt such a spell. Um, and it would only be a temporary thing. All it would do is buy you a second chance, I suppose you could say. A second chance at... Yes. If successful, Demon's Bane would temporarily banish the demon back to whence it came. Normally, that would be the Realm of Chaos. In this instance, it would probably put it back in the dagger. Think of it as a potential reset. So that would only really come into play with the second ritual. Which we're Precisely. hoping not to even employ. Which, hopefully, you will not have to use, and you have... The holy religion of Sigma at your disposal. And I am sure that they are more than equally capable of dealing with this demon in their own ways. The uh, first ritual, the wizard who's conducting it will be constantly barraged with tests of her will. Is there anything we could do to bolster her or protect her, guard her, if even temporarily. Um, not... There are things that we can do to protect, but not the mind. I have no ability to protect somebody's mind. Uh, what about you, Dieter Klempfer? You are a wizard of the Celestial Order. Perhaps you could do something? And he kind of looks at you, and or he, he kind of like shakes his head solemnly and says... Unfortunately not. While I can bolster the strengths of my own mind, I cannot affect those of others. So I would be of little use in this endeavor. How about uh, something to obscure the location, you know? I mean, like you do with your college. <laughs> that is the work of uh, many visit lords. And many powerful artifacts that have been cured over centuries. It's not something that can be done so easily. Obscuring 
such a large area is a very, very great undertaking. Understood. Well, um, we will happily provide the address of where the de where we want it to be delivered, Conrad. Uh, in the next few days, when the ritual will, be will begin, we're just getting the other pieces in order. Well, I don't in I don't intend to bring you the dagger until you are ready to go and perform the ritual. The less time it is in your hands, the safer it will be. It's fine with me. So, I suppose when you are ready, we need to meet here. Do you intend to do this ritual in night time or in the day? Well, knowing the knowing my college, it would probably start at dusk. Um, it's an all day thing, but it feels like when the sun is setting, that's when she will want to begin. Hmm. I mean, it is a twenty four hour ritual, so technically she could begin whenever. It just seems appropriate for a college of death to go when it's twilight. Right. When will she be strongest? Do you guys operate on some kind of real time clock or something where, like, you're stronger when the Pluto is in the second house of Neptune or some shit? I don't know. If this Mercury's in mean. retrograde, or <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's, we want her to be here for strongest when it's the hardest, right? It's a 24-hour ritual of concentration. I think she... I don't think it matters when she'll start, but I'm pretty sure she'll start in Twilight or Midnight. Those are the two that come to mind immediately, given our my order. I mean, I don't care. I don't know how you, you people operate. <laughs> that sounded really <laughs> racist, but you know. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so uh, how do we inform you of the uh, of the time um, since you are, we've only ever met you here uh, you I will your pigeon or a I will have an initiate or... <laughs> I will have an, an initiate stay here at the grove when you are ready come and tell him he will fetch me okay thank you I Both. do have one other question if you are to humor me 36, 24, 36. <laughs> <laughs> and your measurements, my dear? <laughs> he says, Am I assuming that if you successfully destroy the dagger of Yalk Chum, you intend to seek and find the chalice of wrath? Yes. I mean... I guess. <laughs> um, After all, it is... We kept it very, very quiet that the Light College had the dagger. The only reason, reason that we have let you know that we have the dagger is because you came here specifically claiming to be here to destroy it. And the fact that you have already destroyed the first artifact means that destroying... But did we? Okay, I have to clear this up. Guys, we did, did we? No, we did not destroy we the first We did! No! I swear we did, no, guys. they put it in the box because they didn't know how to destroy it. That's no. why we I have thought to destroy that was the this whole thing. one. Because we're supposed to keep them separated from each other. Oh I my thought God. that was the whole thing, was that we didn't know we how to destroy, destroy it. We couldn't destroy it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, you guys never... Dis you... you the demon came out of they the skull. We killed it. We you destroyed killed, it. Right, but the whole point being that it's the essence of a demon. You can't permanently kill it. You got to destroy the artifact. The artifact. It's, in artifact. it's in a box. It wasn't put into a vessel like this one will be. All right. I, I just find it hard to no. believe that Ulrich would intervene and remove and our it's curses not a demon and... it's a third it's the essence manifest corn. of a demon oh it's not corn believe me if it was oh corn. it's not corn okay. no it's his um <laughs> blood knight somebody somebody 
Yeah. See, see, I just I'm having a hard time believing that we didn't because yeah, it's Zach, Ulrich himself, Zachra, Zach, the Red Flayer, is that one who. If yeah, all I'm the, pretty if, sure they made a specific point of telling us it was not destroyed. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They made a very specific point you saying just, it's not you, destroyed. And they were hoping that we would find a way to destroy it correct. while we were out here finding how to destroy this one. That is mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. Which means we may have to go through this shit all <laughs> over again. <laughs> yeah, you 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 found you basically you wrested the artifact away from those that were gonna misuse it. In Put doing it in a so. Box. They, because he, they, if you remember, you showed up when they were doing a ritual to let him loose. And during that ritual, you kicked their ass and had to deal with a whole bunch of the splurge got out and somebody got transformed into that hideous beast, which wasn't the actual demon, but it was like, okay, some right. overflow. Yeah, we interrupted the, the whatever Correct. the fuck they were doing. Huh. So yeah, then managed. the non-Chaos culty people of Ulrich said, um, we'll lock it up in this box to keep it safe, but that's about all we can do. Yeah. And yes. then the person from that um, college Theologica that you talked to was like, oh shit, now I know what this is. There's three of these pieces of crap. Um, and because you didn't destroy that other one, but you were touched by it, you have now become susceptible. Should he ever get out, you're screwed. So you, you, not just to save us, you need to get all this dealt with for your own safety. Yep, that's basically it. So yeah, yeah, we did not destroy that. Okay, thank you for clearing that up because that <laughs> has come up several times. Have, and... But numerous times, the rumor has been spread around town that you have destroyed it. So that's why he believes you have destroyed it. <laughs> Unless anybody's voluntarily co correcting him, he believes that. So, well, I feel like I have several times, but Matthew Bain is always like, "No, we did." <laughs> <laughs> hey, in which case, he probably listened to Matthew Bain because Matthew Bain's a wizard, and he just probably assumes he knows more about what he's talking about. Even though, in this case, he's wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he says. Bertilda's over here with her accent, and she's like that that, <sighs> that one dude off of the Ringer. Where he's like, and then we went for ice cream. And he's like, when the fuck did we get ice cream? That's for up here. When yeah. the fuck did we destroy the artifact? <laughs> yep. That's it. So he's like, but it is indeed fortunate that you did find out that I had Zataka and that you did find some buzzies that can destroy it. And I just hope you succeed. <laughs> well, me let me know when you are ready. And, uh, where do you wish me to meet you at that time? Or do you intend to send the message with my initiate? Uh, we will send it with the initiate. Yeah, okay. we're going to send because we, we don't know yet, so. All right. So, all your pieces of your puzzle have kind of come to play. Um, all that remains is for you to decide where to meet Conrad Mesner to take possession of the artifact and when you do your deed um, and I think that's a great place for us to stop tonight because that way um, when Catarell is back he can be part of the final planning well we appreciate you guys thanks for hanging out we have had a blast hope you did too and um Y'all take care, and we will see you not Monday, but Thursday. Take care, bye.